All right, good evening, NorCal Carters, and uh, this is a special edition. We have Gary Carlton with GFC Carding live. So if you're seeing this live, you can uh, text, comment, uh, text in any questions you might have. But we wanted to catch up with Gary after the uh, Las Vegas event. And uh, how are you doing, Gary? Oh, good. Uh, we got in last night. Uh, unfortunately, we had to go through a, a dust storm on the 58 uh, that kind of hampered our, our progress to get here back home and actually destroyed the front of my van, uh, kind of like sandblasted the windshield and the hood. And, and unfortunately, with my Sprinter van, it's got a bunch of plastic front bumpers, so it looks like someone just sandblasted it. So that was kind of a bummer, but uh, everything's unloaded. Uh, I had to take one of my mechanics the airport so you can get back to Australia. That's Matia Madami. Uh, people know him. Some people know him around here. And uh, what's up, Matia? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Matia, he's gone. He's gone now. He, yeah. We took him to the airport, and then. Um, but I'm gonna tag him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So every we unloaded everything this morning, and then I'm already starting to build uh, some carts that were on order, some Track Magic carts that uh, were purchased. So, uh, if anyone that follows our Instagram, that, that you'll probably you probably saw the photo on our story, or I guess what is it, story or not feed, but story, daily stories that uh, we were, we had a uh, started putting those together today. So. Lots still going on. Still have a lot of work to do. Uh, going in, probably just blend it right into next season. So really, no time off. I know you've been busy. Um, I mean, you were down at Rock the Rio a couple weeks ago, and then you get wet, turned around, come back home, unload, switch everything over to Miami, and then right back to Vegas. Yeah, yeah, and in that time, we had uh, some of the Track Magic first batch Track Magic cards come in, and then also. My first batch of mini carts uh, came in, mini cadet, however you want to say it. Um, so yeah, we've been developing that. We de did a little bit of development and put that stuff together in between Vegas and did some testing on the KA and 100cc IAMI side. Um, yeah, so then the work kind of is, is nonstop. We're always coming out with new things. Um, and yeah, just trying to always keep progressive and, and don't get stagnant. Yeah, that's very important. And speaking of not getting stagnant, I, I really wanted to catch up with you after Las Vegas. There was a video that Oliver Rowan posted on Facebook where, uh, I don't know if it was Saturday night or Friday night or Sunday, but you guys did this uh, like track magic uh, gathering party and... Um, it looks like you guys gave Bob Eric's a cart. Yeah, so, I mean, to be honest, um, I'm probably not the best guy to ask about, like, that party and stuff because uh, I was in the middle of talking to Mattia, Simone Brena, who's uh, uh, a representative from TB Cart, who's the people that manufacture the Track Magic and GFC branded go-karts and Matias were all in like heavy debrief after I think it was the last heat or whenever, whatever day it was, I can't even remember now. And we were like in heavy debrief and Kyle Martin's like, dude, I really hate to do this to you, but we're kind of like, they're kind of having like a little thing over there in, in the track magic tent. Cause they had the big track magic t hospitality tent. And, and I hope those guys and everyone at track magic didn't really think I was blowing them off. Cause I literally didn't go inside that tent, even though it was literally right next to our race team tent. But to uh, watch them give away the carts of Bob Eriks and uh, and for me to make a speech, uh, and it's, I kind of was going in and out because I was still running running my race team uh, at that point, even though the day was ended, you know, tell, telling the guys what we wanted to do and, and kind of uh, what, you know, managing the team still and looking at data and, as we all know, Super Nationals and any, actually any race that we go to, it's always really busy. So, uh, yeah, they, they gave a cart to Bob Eric. I think was really, uh, deserving. I mean, I, I kind of knew about this going into the weekend. Uh, Jason LaPointe had decided he was going to give Bob the, the cart. And are you still there, Gary?
All right. Uh, looks like we lost Gary on the phone. So if everyone will bear with me for a second, I am going to try to reconnect with Gary. So uh, bear with me here. Apologize for that. That was <laughs> He was getting into a good little story there. And all of a sudden we just dropped. So uh, bear with me for a second, NorCal Carters. Uh, but this will be a good chance for us to kind of rewind and um, have him... Gary. Yes. Where do we lose you? We left you. We lost you right at Bob Eric's. Where? So, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, so I don't know exactly. I mean, it was, it was kind of a long conversation about Bob Eric's, but I mean, we all know he was the the, the important piece to the puzzle or the, the first piece to this puzzle of everyone kind of getting together by doing the track magic owners group. And then, um, you know, with Jeff Deskins and everyone else, you know, starting to put photos on the Facebook group page and people putting up their old carts and, you know, looking for pieces and all that, it kind of got everyone ramped up. And then, you know, lo and behold, you have Jason LaPointe, Howie Idelson and Ryan Fowl working on getting the trademark landed and everything for the last the past three years and then having jason call me um you know want maybe to do like a track magic style scholarship to my team and then me having the idea of just building you know a track magic go-kart for fun you know because he jason was looking to have a card and then you know it blossoming into what it was it was you know a really fitting fitting thing for jason to to give bob eric's uh, one of the first, car, you know, the very first cart that was raced in Vegas. And, you know, because being without Bob, you know, without that first person to put the spark in everybody, you know, it might have never, never come to this. And, you know, we owe a, a great deal of gratitude to Bob, uh, you know, because it all turned out so, so well. Well, you guys have just been killing it for the past year. And, yeah, I, I've I've just been so I don't know what the right word is captivated by it because you know it, we've talked about this before you know you have Bob doing little model scales of track magic cards and showing his steering wheel restorations and he's all over all the different marketplaces looking for track magic cards and it, it's just really neat to see and if he never races it almost doesn't matter it's like he's got He's got this whole group of guys that he's re-inspired and reinvigorated to just get in their cart and go out and drive. And it's so cool to see. And um, so did he get serial number one on the track magic? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know exactly where I left off or where I got cut off. Um, but, you know, Jason obviously was the very first one that came to me asking, telling me that he... It landed with Howie and Ryan landed the trademark of Track Magic, and they were maybe thinking about doing a scholarship or helping a driver out, and and it just kind of and our, we started bouncing ideas off each other, and I, and it just became like, well, I'm not gonna let you just put a Track Magic sticker on one of my carts to be a scholarship. Why don't we just make a Track Magic cart? And then in, in you know Jason's first idea, oh, yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, you know, if all else fails, Jason can. Can, can just have a cool cart that he had at home to drive. Maybe he wants to start driving again. And then, you know, it all blossomed to this huge thing of, you know, now we're going to race it. Now we're going to, you know, put it in the Super Nationals and everything else. So Bob ended up getting that go-kart that uh, Matias Ramirez ran just a couple of days ago in the KZ final, and that is 001. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, and then just to clarify, well, when you say Jason – you're talking about Jason LaPointe. Yeah, yeah, we all know we're not talking about you, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would be an NBA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only joking, only joking. No, I, I, I appreciate we, you. We go far enough back, we can do that. But, no, it's yeah. just, again, the whole, everything you guys have going on around this whole Track Magic thing is just so cool. I mean, again, it's it's just reinvigorating. I mean, it just really is neat to see because it's 
um, we're not seeing a lot of that stuff anymore. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess I don't necessarily see it because I'm so focused. I was, like I said, I and mean, I don't know if I got cut off when the phone went dead uh, earlier, but uh, I mean, I didn't go into the Track Magic hospitality tent at all. I mean, and I hope all the people that were at that event, you know, didn't think I was, didn't want to talk to them. I was so focused on, you know, my racing team on the GFC side and then obviously the Track Magic card and the KZ. I mean, I was so focused on one, wanting all the drivers to do well and especially the Track Magic to do well for all those people that came that, I mean, I didn't even go into the, into the hospitality tent until, like I said before, when Kyle, like, he's like, dude, I mean, I hate to do this to you, but you need to come over here. Like, they're doing a whole presentation, and you guys are not even here, you know? So it's like, they understood. I mean, I hope everyone understood, and uh, this, you know, the support and, and everything was great. And like I said, I think I won't realize how cool it was until after, because I really was just so focused on trying to make that cart fast that I wasn't, you know, even – able to enjoy the camaraderie, the stories and, and everything that was going on around, you know, the program. But, uh, I mean, I guess that's all kind of how I've always been anyways, you know, I'm so, I've always been really focused on just doing one thing and, and one thing only and not, you know, really looking at everything else, you know, that comes with it. Yeah. And, you know, I was watching the Oliver Rowan video that he was doing with, um, when they were doing the kind of their presentations and everything, I, if you didn't realize that you weren't paying attention or you weren't involved, I didn't realize it, it actually, you guys just came off the track and you were debriefing. Um, so that's kind of some nice insight as well to that whole backstory. But to hear that whole tent kind of erupt when, when they gave you the credit for running the team and everything you just get a sense of admiration for how much work and effort you're putting into this thing. And, uh, so if you, if you weren't involved or engaged at that moment, um, as an outsider watching it, uh, you, you definitely gain their respect and their appreciation for the hard work. And I, I think all of them understood as well. Yeah. I mean, uh, as racing goes, I mean, it's, it's the amount of hours that we put in, uh, <laughs> To these programs and everything else. I mean, if you got paid like a normal job, I would be retired by now, I think. <laughs> um, uh, or just racing myself, paying the race myself still or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was really nice when they, they presented me with a nice little photo. And, um, and like I said, I really hope and maybe this can be like a little outlet and if some of the guys do – listen to this podcast i do really appreciate everything you guys did for me in the photo and signing it and everything and if i didn't look like i was appreciative it was it from or of it, it it's only because i was literally just thinking about what seat i wanted to put in the car what position this that what jet i mean i was still such in race mode that i mean i when they asked me to, to do a speech i, mean, I really didn't even know what to say because my head was one one place, and you know you're tired, and then when you're tired, you're emotional, and, and, it, and it was, uh, yeah, it was maybe maybe not the right time for me to, to do anything. But when when is there the right time when you're when you're on a race week and that's so intense, like the Supernats or or any other race? I mean, even just because it's Supernats, I, I take every race, you know. Seriously, just like the other one, if it's a club race, it's a super match. But I'm there to win. I'm there to do the best for my customers and 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 my drivers. So, but it, it was really cool. It was. Re I hope they all enjoyed it. I hope we we did well enough. You know that, that they they felt they they got what they came for, so to speak. And and I guess I don't even know.